24, uh, 18, 2024. Let's pray and let's get into the word. Father, we bless you tonight. We thank you so much for allowing us to come together. Oh, how we bless you. How we thank you, Lord, that you're the God who's not only a sovereign God, but at the same time, you give us certain uh, liberties, Father, within that sovereignty to be able to express your kingdom on the earth. We bless you today as we get into your word. We thank you for your spirit, whom we trust to lead us and guide us into all truth and show us things to come. And we thank you, precious Lord, that you give us ears to hear, eyes to see, minds to comprehend and understand just what the Spirit of God is saying to us. And so we bless you and thank you that we can take those truths, assimilate them into our lifestyle, and begin to start executing them in a manner that glorifies your name. In Jesus Christ's name, we bless you and thank you. In Amen and amen. I'm going to leave it right there and just go right in. All right, can we, there we go again. Did you hear any of my introduction? Did you hear my prayer earlier? Okay, then if, if that's done, I don't know why this thing is muting on and off, but let's just continue to get into the word. All righty, praise the God. Again, thank you. Welcome everyone. And let's get into the word of God by, virtue, uh, by way of what uh, we learned last week. I'm not going to go to that. You can go to the video. It's already posted there at uh, Marisa Ligon on YouTube. And you can go ahead and check that out or else uh, there are other places that you can find it as well. Let's get right into it. So uh, we left off last week um, getting into the area of the imagination. And so I just want to give you that are joining us today uh, just scriptures that we had already looked at. I'm not going to go through them. You can go to the Bible and find them or into the video and find them later on of last week's video. Well, our title was, Do You See What I See? In John chapter 5, verse 19, we found out that Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself. Now, remember what I taught you last week, that the Gospels are not, are not for, for teaching doctrine. The Gospels are for us to learn how Jesus operated and his lifestyle in the kingdom while he was here on earth. Just remember that. All right. We can derive certain little little truths. Out of, uh, well, there's all truth in there. But the point is, as far as doctrines are concerned, they begin in the book of Acts and beyond. Up to this point in the Gospels, all we're seeing is Jesus lifestyle, how he operates in the kingdom and, and how we're supposed to operate as believers in the kingdom as well. So here he says the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do. For whatever things soever the Father does, those are also what the, what the Son imitates or does likewise. So we're finding then that one of the things that we learn about kingdom lifestyle is that you as a believer and I have to understand that if we're going to do anything that's going to have eternal value, come on somebody, say eternal value. Thank you. Eternal value, then that means that we're going to have to get that from God. Anything that's done out of the flesh, anything that's done out of our own personal reasoning or whatever is not going to have eternal value. But that which has eternal value is that which comes from the Father. So Jesus then taught us that he operated by what? By doing the will of the Father. Where did he get that? In the secret place. And that's what we were talking about when we started our subject here way back. And that was that this is the year of the door. I'm not rehashing. You can go and watch all kinds of videos on the year of the door, the year of the Dalit, it's called. And uh, we found out that it's the time where the, 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 the master is approaching with his camels laden with all kinds of blessings and everything else. And he's coming to the house. And there's, there's now the year of the door. And the year of the door is where he's going to begin to bring into your life things that will help you to transition out of and into. All right. Having said all that, we also went on to something else. We also went on to the scripture of 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1, and we talked about Elijah. And one of the things we found there in Elijah, uh, in the book of 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1, 1 Kings 17, 1, was that Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall be no dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Let me say again, what, is it, what are we talking about? Do you see what I see? So here we find Elijah, who is an, is an unknown prophet. He comes out of nowhere. Now, there was a school of the prophets, but he came out of nowhere. And all of a sudden, he comes up and starts saying, there's not going to be any rain until I say so. 
But he gave us the secret to his success. I've taught this before on other subjects. And that is, what was the secret to Elijah's ability? It was that he had learned how to stand before the Lord. Those are the key words right there that, that shows you where his power came from, where his authority came from. It said, before whom I stand, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall be no rain or dew. So, uh, but, but according to his word, where, where was he getting that word? He was getting it from the secret place because he was entering into that place according to Psalm, I believe it's 15. And uh, the other psalm, I'll get it to you later, but it talks about who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord, who shall stand in his holy place. He that had clean hands and a pure heart. I believe it's in the 20s. And so you find, you find it there that he had come to a place where he had learned to stand in the presence of the Lord. Therefore, God entrusted him with the, with the, with the responsibility of taking the word of the Lord that was revealed to him on that holy mountain. And then he would come and release that word. It's the same thing with us. It's the same thing that Jesus was practicing. All he was doing was going and learning in his prayer time. Remember, he would go alone and pray. He would go in prayer, spend time with God in the secret place. God would reveal to him what was coming up next or what his will was for the next day. And he would go ahead and take care of business and do it. Do you see what I see? The third one we said to you was Hebrews chapter 12. And, and again, you can watch, you can go and watch all the rest of this. But Jesus, the Bible says, chapter 12 of Hebrews, verse 2, looking unto Jesus, this is Paul speaking now. Uh, many believe Paul wrote Hebrews. Uh, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. Is that right? Despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such contradictions of sinners, verse 3, against himself, lest you be weary and faint in your minds. So we learned something because you, you had recalled that we had we had watched Sister V.O., <laughs> amen, and, uh, and, and she had taught us about, about uh, uh, the mind, the battlefield of the mind and so on and overcoming. And we said to you that here, Jesus was able to overcome all that he was going through all the way up to the cross and his death because there was something that he was that he was looking at. It says that he endured. Why? For the joy that was set before him. So he was seeing something before him instead of the crowd and the people and the noise they were making. He was focused on something he had gotten. He had gotten a revelation. He had gotten a picture. He had gotten a picture of, 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 of the of the of the of what the end result would be by what he went through, all right? Now, he got that because he spent time in the secret place. So now, while he's going through all this stuff in his life, it doesn't matter. You know why? Because he already has a picture of how it's going to end. Let me say this to you, my friend, that we've been talking to you about the secret place because it's that place that in these end times, you better learn how to access and you better learn how to practice because it's there that God is going to show you things to come. Remember that Jesus said the Holy Spirit will show you the future, show you things to come. And it's there that you're going to get the picture of the end result of whatever's going to come and hit the fan in a few in a few months, in a few in a few years. It's all going to start coming down. And you need to know how to negotiate your life once all this stuff starts to happen. You need to know where God wants you to be, where he wants you to be, when he wants you to go there and what he wants you to do. If he wants you to stay, he's going to show you how to survive and thrive. Amen. And if he tells you it's time for you to go somewhere else, well, you're going to pick it up in the secret place. And in that place of intimacy, God will reveal to you where he wants you to go. And, and you need to get your ticket and go. My point is, is that you and I are called to exercise the lifestyle of Jesus, which is seeing the, the unseen, seeing the future and being able to walk it out in your life because you got the you got the information before anybody else concerning what God was about to do in you and through you and for you. So here we are in Hebrews chapter 12. He said there at, in verse three that he endured all this stuff. Why? Because he had his focus on what the revelation God had for him. Bottom line is, if you don't, Paul says here, you will get weary and you will give up. You will you will grow weary and you will faint in your minds. In other words, you're just going to throw in the towel, toss in the towel, and that's it. So we're at a place now where we're learning here about the image. Jesus got an image that he was focusing on from where? From that place of intimacy, prayer and communion that he was spending time with the Lord. You know, 
It doesn't matter how much time you spend in the word of God. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you memorize the Bible from the from the from from the book of contents to the book of maps. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? It doesn't matter. What matters is, is that the Bible is what is the general will of God. Write it down. We've said this to you before. The Bible it just reveals to you the general will of God. But the Bible doesn't give you a specific will of God. So it doesn't matter how much of the word of God you have. If the heart is not at a place where it can develop that hearing ear to discern the voice of God, then you're not going to be able to discern the voice of God in the secret place. Listen to what I said. If you, the purpose of the word of God is to instruct you and develop you, but also to help you to develop the ability to discern the voice of God, because the written word of God is the voice of God speaking to us when God speaks. So there you find that if you just go into the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, and read and read and memorize and memorize, you're not going to get anywhere. You know, when we were living over in Tulsa, Oklahoma, we used to have a carnival. That come that would come through town, and there was a guy in that carnival, and you know what he he do? He would challenge you. He would he would quote to you any scripture in the Bible for a dollar. Huh? One dollar, and you could go ahead and tell him um, Leviticus four seven, and he would just tell you what it said, and there it was in your Bible. That's right. Thank you for your dollar. And the guy could come up with everything. Some guys would come up to him and say Hezekiah four seven. <laughs> and he would take their dollar because there's no book of Hezekiah. Hello. <laughs> and so and so this guy knew the Bible from the from like I told you from content to the maps. Yet at night he was a womanizer, he was a drunkard. Hello. You see he knew he read and memorized the word of God, but he never allowed it to have an impact in his life. So it's not enough that you have just know, know the word, know the word. As a matter of fact, what did Paul say? Knowledge, puff it up. Puff up means you get constipated. Knowledge will puff you up, and after a while, you start to have a stink on you. But godliness is profitable in all things. Godliness is godlike. Godlike is Christlike. Christ-like is that you're living and imitating Christ. So if Christ paid the price of intimacy, imagine this. He was the word of God incarnate, and yet he would go to the Father to get the word from the Father on what he was supposed to do. Did you hear what I said? He was the word incarnate. He was the second person of the Trinity. He was the word of God made flesh. And yet he would have to go to the father in his earthly walk and he would have to go access the secret place to get a download of the will because the will of God is the word of God and the word of God is the will of God. So he would get the download of the word of God, which was the will of God, and then he would go and do it. He didn't choose his disciples until he first went and found out in the secret place what he, the father, whom the father wanted him to choose. Did you hear what I said? He didn't know who the disciples were going to be. He had to go in, into the secret place, into that place of intimacy, just like you and I. And the father showed him this one, that Peter, James and John and all the rest. And even Judas Iscariot. That's why Jesus said, have I not chosen all of you? And one of you is, a, is going to betray me, is a devil. You're going to betray me. Yeah. Jesus knew all that. Why? Because in that time of prayer, getting ready to select the, his disciples, the father showed him this one, that one, this one, that one, and this guy here, he, he's going to betray you, but take him in anyway. <laughs> and so, so you understand then that in this principle of secret place, you're developing the lifestyle of Jesus. And so here we find that Jesus was able to focus on the prime directive and the end result because he had gotten the download that even though he was going to go through all this, he didn't worry about it because the father had already shown him the harvest is going to come. You're going to have a harvest out of this one life that you give, son. You The, the seed falls to the ground, but it brings forth much. And Jesus was looking at that image of you and I and everyone else that would come into the kingdom. And so here we learn the secret of Jesus, that he was affected in his imagination. Because remember, when the father gives you a word, you're going to have to go ahead and, oh, come on, somebody. You're going to have to nurture that seed. Did you hear what I said? 
write it down, nurture the seed. Just write down, nurture the seed. And I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about. The Bible tells us that we are born of the seed of God's word. The word seed there is sperma. It's what we have in the Greek sperm. We, we, in English, we have the word sperm. So we learn then that God's word is, is a seed, a divine sperma, a seed. Now, how many know the seed has to be has to be implanted, and so and so through 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 um, intimacy, a husband and a wife. The sperm is released, and it seeks out the egg, and then all of a sudden, boom, we have a pregnancy, a pregnant state. Pregnancy develops, and so she gets pregnant. Well, it's the same thing with the Word of God. God releases a word to us, and it has to find a place of rest. It has to find that, that embryo. It has to find that, that, that embryo, and when they make the connection, boom, things happen. Now in the secret place, I'm gonna. This is this is a little too much for some of you, but it's okay. You'll you'll go back and review it a hundred times. In the place of the secret place and intimacy, you will receive a seed from God. You will receive a download of the word of the Lord. How many know Jesus said the Holy Spirit will not speak of, of His own on His own accord. He will not speak of His own. The Holy Spirit will only speak to you what the Father permits Him to uh, to give to us. So the Spirit of God will speak to us the Word of God. The Word of God is synonymous with the sperma or the seed. Yes or no? The seed of God is the Word of God. Isn't that what Jesus said when he talked to us about the farmer? He said, the sower sows the Word. The sower sows the seed. And then he gave the interpretation. The seed is the Word of God. So Jesus then is telling us in that place of intimacy, God is going to download what? His Word. He's going to give you a Word and he needs you to let it land in your in your embryo. He needs you to connect with that. And when you connect with it, you are now pregnant with that word. Did you hear what I said? You become pregnant with that word. Now it's up to you and I to what? To nurture that word, protect that word. I know that Sita sent some of you the PDF file of the book, The Fourth Dimension by Dr. Young E. Cho. I'm telling you, in his book, he talks about incubation. Write it down. We're talking about incubation now. You get a word from God. Now, listen to me. You can get a word from God in the secret place on your own. You can get a word from God through a prophetic word. Did you hear what I said? God can send you a prophet. The prophet releases the word of the Lord to you. But the word of the Lord that the prophet brings to you is conditional. Write it down. Conditional. Because we're talking about the seed of God's word. I just said that to you. I said that, that his word is his seed or sperma. I said to you that your heart is the embryo or is that is 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 the egg. Is the egg uh, is the egg. So the seed is looking for connects with that with your heart. And all of a sudden now the seed of God is planted in your heart. The sperma, the word of God is now planted in your heart. And all of a sudden now you become pregnant. But you're in the incubation spirit, uh, period. You're in a period of pregnancy, but you have to take care of that, of that, of yourself now because you're carrying the word of the Lord. So the prophet releases the word to you. You catch that word. You hear it. And if you believe it, you receive it. And once you receive it, it doesn't come to pass until the right time. Write it down. The right time. There is a Kairos moment for that seed to come to pass. There is a proper time for God's word that he gave you to come to pass. That's why the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, I believe it is, where he, uh, uh, chapter 6, where, where he talks about how that through faith and patience, you inherit the manifestation of the promise. Did you hear that? Through faith and patience. So in faith and patience, are your, are your friends during the time that you receive a prophetic word from the Lord or you receive a download from God in your in your secret place and he begins to show you the future. He begins to show you something concerning your, your loved one that they're, that they're going to come in. You see them at an altar in a vision. You see them at an altar giving their heart to Jesus. 
and, and in that secret place, you saw that and the Lord deposited that in you. That's a revelation. That's a word from God. It comes into your spirit. And now you are there to possess it and to begin to start believing and hold on to it until it comes to pass. You don't keep praying for your loved one to be saved. You now have a revelation, a seed from God, and you begin to thank God on the basis of the revelation he gave you that your loved one is going to be at that altar. You don't know when it's going to happen, but all you can do now is go ahead and praise God and protect that seed. And when the enemy comes, listen to me, when the enemy comes and begins to attack you, Milan, and begins to show you, oh, no, they're not going to make it. Oh, no, they're not coming to the Lord. Oh, look, at they're getting worse than better. Oh, look at that mess. Oh, they're in another mess. Shut up, devil. I don't care what I see. I'm not moved by what I hear. Come on, learn to fight. Learn to fight for what God gives you. If the Lord told you that you and your household shall be saved, then you and your household shall be saved. Learn to fight for that. And don't let the devil come and mess with you because you see things are not going right and you hear things are not going right. So what? If you hold on to that word, if you praise him and thank him because as far as you're concerned, it's a done deal. Then guess what? It's a done deal. And the right time will come where God will bring that to pass. He is going to work out circumstances and at the right time, bam, what you saw comes to pass, and there they are at the altar, giving their heart to Jesus and being born again and part of the family. Where did you get all that? Well, you got it just like Jesus. You either got it in a download in the secret place, or you got it because the Lord sent someone with a word to tell you. You've been praying for your, for your daughter. You've been praying for your son. You've been praying for your children. And the Lord says to tell you, 2024 is the year of the door. That they're gonna, he's gonna open a door opportunity for them to have an experience with the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Woo! Now, wouldn't you like that? He didn't tell you what what day on 2024. <laughs> it could be tomorrow. It could be three months from now. But see, you shouldn't worry about the time, and you shouldn't care about when it's gonna happen. What your focus should be on is praising God that he gave you this download and he gave you this word and now it's up to you to protect it. And no matter what happens, what's going on, you will not let it go. Do not let the promise go. Why? Because it's the promise is the seed. The seed finds a place of rest. It needs to find a place to begin to start growing. I've been talking to Melen because I've been looking at her, but let me go look at some other pretty faces. Glory to God. Now listen to me, Rose. We're talking about how that God gives you a download. He, he, he releases that into your spirit. You get pregnant with that. Well, Young E. Cho talked about the period of incubation. I told you this story before, but I'm just po pointing this out real quick. Young E. Cho talked about how that he was so poor that even the poor called him poor. Now, you got to be real poor if the poor call you poor. Hello. <laughs> huh? And so, and, so, and so he talked about how that he went through rough times because during the, the war, the Korean War and everything else. And so, and so there's devastation everywhere, poverty everywhere. And he was, he was pastoring. And I mean, the, he, I told you he was so poor. They would, they, if, they, if, he got a, if he got a cup of rice, for the week from pastoring, that was that was his offering. But he was poor, but he ran across a book and in it he, he learned that he could begin to start asking the father for things that were that seemed impossible. And so he decided, you know what, I'm gonna believe God's word. And so he he began to to ask the Lord. He said, Lord, I, I'd like a table. I have a house, it's empty, it's just dirt floor. I need some furniture. I would like. I would like a mahogany table, a, a mahogany table made of Philippine mahogany. I want an office desk made of Philippine mahogany. Oh, you know what else, Lord? I'm tired of walking all those miles to church. I'd like a, I'd like a Schwinn bicycle. Hello. Or I'd like a bicycle. And, 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 so, and so he put those things on the line. Then he went to church and he declared to the people, praise God, I have a new, I have a new office table. Oh, and he wanted an office chair with, with rollers on it. 
so he could slide around on it or across the desk. And and so and so those are the things he asked the Lord for. So he goes the next the next Sunday to church to his church, made of all these poor people, and he declares to them, "Praise God! I've got a new office table. I've got a new uh, uh, chair with wheels on it, with with rollers on it. I've got a new bicycle. Praise God!" Woo! Everybody's excited. On his way home, three guys are following. Two guys are following him. And he looks back and he says, what do you want? He said, well, we're, want, we're coming to your house. What are you coming to my house for? Well, we want to see your new chair, your new table, and, 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 your, and your new bike. He said, well, uh, he just kept walking. <laughs> he doesn't have it. Diana. I said, he doesn't have it yet. So he goes and keeps walking. And he said, Lord, what, what am I going to do here? What am I going to do here? Gets to his house, opens his door, the place is empty. The people, the guys look in and they go, what? You said you had a table, you had a chair, you had this. Where's it at? And all of a sudden he said, Lord, help me. And the Lord said, tell them you're pregnant with them. Tell them you have them, but you're pregnant with them. And so he told them, I'm pregnant with them. And all of a sudden, they, they said, what? You're pregnant? <laughs> they started laughing. You're pregnant. What do you mean you're pregnant? He said, no, I have them. They're in here. They're in my, in my spirit right here. They're going to manifest, but I'm pregnant with them. They said, look, when a woman gets pregnant, uh, is she pregnant? And she, she starts showing? Yeah. Is there a baby in there? Yes. Well, what's going on? It's being developed. It's being developed. He says, I'm going through my gestation period. I'm going through a nine, a nine month period here and I'm pregnant. And at the right time, just like the woman gives birth at the right time, at the right time, those things are going to manifest. Long story short, get the book or get Sita's to send you the PDF. Long story short, guess what? They go out and start telling the whole congregation, Pastor's pregnant, Pastor's pregnant. And now all people are ridiculing him and so on. But you know what? Suddenly, there's somebody that came along, some missionary guy. Hey, I, I got a bicycle here. Can you use it? Yeah. Hey, I got, a, I got a chair with rollers. Yeah. Hey, I got a mahogany desk. Can you? Oh, yeah. And all those things came to pass. Do you know why? Because he took it from incubation to manifestation. See, I told you, Jesus went into the secret place. He saw what he saw, and then he went and carried it out. There were things that were revealed for the daily basis. There were things that God was showing him for three months ahead, six months ahead. But there were things that he was showing him that were going to help him while he goes through the greatest trial of his life, going to the cross. And while he's on that cross, he saw and kept his eyes on the focus of the vision of the promise of God. You and I are going to go through trials in life. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're from Benny Hinn to Billy Graham. You are going to have testings and trials in your life. But if you will learn to go to the secret place and take in the download from God and draw the promises of God in the written word and take that word and begin to take those promises and declare them and believe them, I tell you, you will see changes in your life. Because the word cannot return void. It must perform that which it has been sent to perform. But it cannot, it cannot perform anything if it doesn't have somebody who has faith and patience. Through faith and patience, Hebrews 6, they inherit the promise. They got the promise, the manifestation. You get it by faith. You hold on to it until it manifests. That's why the Bible says, he that's planted, he, the, the, the man, the woman that serves the Lord is, is like, a, like a tree planted by the waters. You shall not be moved. Come on, Psalm, I think, 112. Don't go there. Just I'm just giving it to you. Write it down somewhere. Where he talks about, blessed is the man. Blessed is the person, because I got a bunch of women here. Praise God. I said, blessed is the, blessed is the man. Blessed is the woman. Blessed is the man who, who delights in the Lord. Come on now. Blessed is the man who delights in God and doing his word. And in his word, he meditates on it. And the Bible says that he, he, he when 
bad news comes, listen to this, Angela. When bad news comes, he's not moved. Do you know why he does? he's not moved? He's not faced? Because the Bible says he is trusting in the Lord. His heart is fixed, May. The word fixed there is the word, is the word in the in the in the in the Salvador and Felicitas Encyclopedia. And here's the definition of fixed: superglued. <laughs> that's a, that's the Salcitas translation. Superglued. His heart is fixed. It's superglued. Come on. He is not shaken. He's not worried. When bad news comes, he he does like. He does like, you know who, shake it off, shake it off. Come on, hello, because the haters are going to hate and the players are going to play, play, play. Hello, but you got to learn to shake it off. Because God is for you. God says if you will believe and hold on to this thing, it will come to pass because I said it cannot return void to me. Is somebody hearing me tonight? All right, well, Jesus, where did Jesus get that, that, that picture? He got it downloaded into, into his spirit by the Holy Spirit in communion and in intimacy, in fellowship, amen? It came down into Jesus' spirit. All right, guess what happens then? He, he developed it in his soul. Listen to what I'm saying to you. When we talk about incubation, when we talk about, about the pregnancy time, he took that image and he began to develop it in his soul. Come on. How many know that God is a spirit? He's not going to talk to you in any other way. He's going to talk to your spirit. I said he's going to talk to your spirit. So when God speaks to your spirit, he downloads things into your spirit. It's, it's up to you to go ahead and practice developing your spirit so that you can go ahead and pick up what God is saying and go ahead and let it get into your soul. And it's in your soul that you begin to start thinking about what God said. Did you hear what I said? Whether you get in the secret place or whether you get a prophecy or whether you get a promise from the word of God, it doesn't matter. The bottom line is once it gets into your heart, your soul, you've got to learn to meditate on that. You've got to start thinking and dwelling on that. If he said you and your household shall be saved, then you're going to have to take it, meditate on it, and believe it until it comes to a place in your life that you believe it. And no matter what, no one's going to shake that out of you. I know my family will be saved. I know my children will be saved. I know there's changes coming. Why? Because I know. How do you know? Because I've meditated on that truth to the point where it has become reality to me. And it is real. And I will not let it go. Amen. And so he picked up that image. He developed it in his soul. Come on now. He picked it up. And I'll just read it to you how I wrote it. He developed his soul to pick up the image of the future in his imagination. Let me say it again. God gives you a promise. You begin to meditate on it in your soul. And guess what happens? When you develop it, it, before, it develops an image. When that image comes and is developed through your imagination because you're dwelling on it, you're thinking about it, guess what happens? It will become a reality. I'm not talking about Eastern Indian Hindu meditation and, you know, uh, name it and claim it and, 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 and repeat it a thousand times. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you're taking that, that image and you're meditating on that truth, that word, and it begins to start developing inside of you an image that is, becomes, listen to me, becomes a stronghold. Write it down. You see, God's word, oh, I hope you're going to catch this now. Some of you might turn me off, but you'll come back. God's word develops strongholds, Rose, in your life. <laughs> oh, no, Brother Sal, strongholds are from the devil. Please, let me baptize you in water again. I said to you, God's word develops strongholds in your life, just like the devil's words develop strongholds in your life. Are you listening to me? How many know a stronghold that's developed in your mind is because you've been thinking about that thing for so long that it now becomes something you can't lose. You try to get, shake it off, but you can't shake it. They told you got cancer. Oh, it might be cancer. We don't know, but we. Uh, but now you're thinking and meditating and dwelling on it, and it becomes a stronghold. And now you try to resist that thing, but it won't go anywhere. Did you hear what I said? It becomes a stronghold. 
In Corinthians, Paul tells you, casting down every stronghold, every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. But let me say this to you. In, in your life, God also wants to build up strongholds. That's why when he gives you a promise from his word, he is, he is getting you to develop and meditate on it and meditate on it until it becomes a stronghold. Nothing can shake it off of you. Why? Me? Because you're meditating on it. Diane, you're meditating on it. Felicitas, you're meditating on it. And Pastora, you're meditating on it. Now let me say this to you, my friend. You're meditating on this. And remember what I told you Kim Clement said? What you see, you be. <laughs> I remember I remember him. But I remember those words. What you see, you be. That's right. That's why I put your kids in front of, put your kids in front of any of these artistas out there that dress goofy and act dumb and let them watch that over and over and over again. And guess what? They'll begin to start imitating them. Do you know why? Because what you see, you be. You know what else? What you hear, you will begin to act out. That's why the song has a good rhythm, but most people don't even know the lyrics to the song. Because they like, the, they like the, the, the beat. But you know what? It's the philosophy that's being pumped into your head through what you're listening to. That's why you got to be careful what you hear and what you hear and what you see. Because it affects, it'll put an image in you. Now, let me help you with this. I'm trying to close. YouTube says 28 minutes or you lose your audience. <laughs> well, we proved they're liars because we've been we've almost gone an hour before, haven't we? All right, let me give you this real quick. We're talking about this image, meditating, taking the word. Take, I said taking the word and developing a stronghold, meditating, protecting, nurturing, developing that that uh, protecting that that pregnancy, that uh, that 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 seed that's in you now that's called a baby. Let me take you to the the true story of the woman that had a blood flow that would not stop. For 12 years, the Bible says, she went to doctors trying to get this blood flow to stop. She was bleeding all the time. She spent all her money, the Bible says. And then suddenly, May, she got a download. She got a revelation. Here's what the Bible says. And when she heard that people would touch the hem of Jesus' garment and they would be healed, watch. She said within herself, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I can be made whole. Where did she hear that from? Somebody told her. She has never met Jesus. She has never heard of Jesus. But somewhere, some comadre was telling her the story. Ay, comadre, you know, huh? Mare, we, we were out there and we saw this guy, this guy, he's named Jesus. And you know, people were touching his 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 tassels of his of his garment and they were healed. She just heard. She never saw. She never heard him preach. <clears throat> he was not a disciple. She just heard. But the words she heard painted an image inside of her. She began to meditate on that, dwell on that. If they could get healed by touching, then if I could touch the hem of his garment, I will also be made whole. So she had a stronghold developed within her. And she began to meditate and meditate until it became so strong that she was fully persuaded the word fully persuaded, believe means to be fully persuaded. She was fully persuaded that if she could connect with that tassel, she would be healed. And you know what? Come hell or high water, risk of being stoned because she was not supposed to be among people that were well. She was considered someone that was unclean. 
She was bleeding. She was unclean. She risked everything. And she went and pressed through the crowd because she had said within herself, if I can but touch the hem of his I will. Not, I hope so. Not, mm, chamba, suerte. No, I know I will be healed. If she had touched, if she had touched his sandals, his, 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 his shoes, nothing. If he, if she, if she had touched his hair, nothing. Because her point of contact was his garment, the tassels. So you've got to understand when it comes to releasing your faith, you have to have a point of contact. That's why for most people that are expecting when they hear a miracle service, their point of contact is when the man of God touches me, when the woman of God touches me, I will receive that impartation, that healing. That's the point of contact. If I send you a handkerchief that we have prayed for and anointed and, and you know that we have prayed for it and we wrote to you that when this comes into your hands, go ahead and go into your room and lay, and, and lay it on, your, on, your, on yourself. And the moment you do that and say, Jesus, I received my miracle, bam, you're going to get it. Why? Because that's your point of contact. Hmm. I remember back in the days when Benny Hinn would pray and he'd say, stretch out, stretch out your hand and, and put it on the television. Touch my hand and I will release healing. And people would get healed. Why? Because their point of contact for their miracle and the faith that they had was if they touched the television and the hand, they would get healed and they would get healed. You see, point of contact, her point of contact was the tassels. But why did it happen? Because she had taken a word. She heard and she let that word find a place of rest. She meditated on it and she said to herself, if they could do it, I can get it too. And they got it and she got it. And hallelujah, you can have it too. Amen. So where did he de where did Jesus develop this? He developed it in his in his soul. He got the revelation in his spirit down into his soul, and then he would go and act it out. Same thing with you and I. You get a promise from God. You get a prophetic word. Protect it. Nurture it. Keep it. Incubation time. Because it's time for a manifestation after incubation. And in that period of time, you're going to have time to let go of that. You're going to have time to abort that baby. Did you hear what I said? And you'll, you, 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 a woman can abort the baby without even realizing she's, she aborted the baby. My auntie, my auntie uh, had a sister, and, and, and she, she loved to eat pickles and drink the pickle juice. Woo, she was addicted to those dill pickles in, in, in vinagre and vinegar. Woo, she loves mm -mm, and the juice. Woo. Well, when she got pregnant, she didn't realize that that stuff is a baby killer. The vinegar and the salt. Hello. The pH about everything went off. So she's eating these pickles and drinking the vinegar, and guess what? She lost the baby. She aborted the baby, not knowing that she had been the one doing it because of the vinegar and, and, and the high sodium content. And the baby was aborted. You cannot allow yourself to abort what God has given you. You've got to carry it to full term. Now, let me say something to you. When we first start in the secret place, and God begins to show us things, or he'll send people. I had a dream last night about you, and the Lord showed me you were like this and like that and doing this and that. Wow, it was awesome. Well, God used that person to bring you a word. Now you've got to take that word, and you've got to nurture it and know that there's a right time for it to happen. So be mindful of this, because if you aren't, you will not understand the power of the imagination. Come on, let's go on, because we want to finish up this. <laughs> this uh, I didn't say all this last time, so you get that for a freebie. Go ahead and enjoy it. Enjoy it. Amen. <laughs> all right. Do you see what I see? Let's continue here. The role of the, the imagination in the last days. 
I put some new stuff in here, so I'm just going to repeat this for your sake, and you can go watch the video later. All right? The role of the imagination in these last days. Amen? You are a spirit being. Remember I told you that? You are an eternal spirit. Psychology tells you you're just, you're just a body with a mind, and when you die, poof, you cease to exist. No, you don't. You are triune in nature. You are a spirit being. You possess a soul, live in a body. I've taught you that. You possess a soul. So you are an eternal spirit. You possess a soul. The soul is the part of you that what? That harnesses your will, emotions, and intellect. In within the intellect is reasoning, right? You don't have to write it. Go watch the video. All right. So here we are. We are a spirit being. We possess a soul, which is where our will, emotions, and intellect and reason exist. And we live in a body. Your body is your earth suit. Without the earth suit, you cannot legally operate in the earth. That's why Jesus had to be born of a woman. He got the flesh from Mary, but he was he was the, he was the seed of God in the flesh. So he was not born of the seed of man. He was born of the seed of God. But he needed to legally enter in, so he needed a body. That's where Mary comes in. Mary, Mary never touched him as far as her blood is concerned. I'm just saying to you. Man, I wish I could remember what the name of the book was. When we were going to Bible school, they gave us a book. And in that book, this one doctor wrote this book. And he taught, and he, and he taught about how that the blood of a woman never goes into, into the baby. Did you know that? It, 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 now, listen, the, the blood carries food. But when it, gets to, when it gets to the umbilical cord and that, what happens is it draws the food through the umbilical cord and feeds the baby. But that's it. There, there's no blood that goes into the baby from, from the mother during that time of pregnancy. Did you hear what I said? So all Jesus got from her was the body. But the blood and the seed came from God. So he was a legal entity in the earth. A human being born of a woman. That's why he had a right. Unlike the devil who was not born of a woman. He got his authority to operate in the earth because of Adam and Eve betraying God. But Jesus came in. A human with a body. God. 100% God. 100% man. He has a soul. Yes or no? He has a soul. He has a will. He has a body to execute the will if he wants to. The Bible says he was tempted in all areas, every area, huh? with the three F's, finances, fortune, and females. Hello? He, he experienced temptation on every side. There is no temptation that he did not experience, but he never succumbed to the temptations. Hallelujah! Therefore, he has the power to deliver you and to help you not to succumb to any temptation. Did you hear what I said? He will deliver you if you will trust him. <clears throat> He'll empower you with the same power he had to resist the devil as well. Hmm. Let me go on because I'm starting to preach here. Let's go on. He, okay, so he possesses a soul. He lives in a body. Now, let me, let me say this to you. The soul is where the imagination resides. Remember that, Angie? The soul is where the imagination resides. God created it in you for a purpose. All right, we're, we're coming into this now. He created the imagination for a purpose. Because remember, God gives you, write it down somewhere, Pastora. God gives you the power to make wealth. Yes or no? Deuteronomy chapter 18. He gives, uh, he gives you the, chapter 8, I believe it. Chapter 8. He gives you the power to make wealth, that he may establish his covenant. Yes or no? So he gives you the power to get make wealth. Where does that power come from? That power comes from God giving you a download and you act upon that revelation. He gives you a strategy. He gives you a picture. He gives you an, a, 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 a schematic. So the guy who invented the hula hoop, just all he did was he saw in his mind this image and he went and created it and he became a millionaire all because of some plastic in a round in a round tube Hallelujah. he gave he gives you the power to get wealth <clears throat> now the devil the devil also tries to play the game but he can't win it the devil will give you power but he wants your soul he'll give you wealth 
but he wants your soul. That's why we're finding from Hollywood, a lot of people are starting to come out now who are saying, hey, I was in there and the pedophilia and the dark and the, and the mad black masses and everything else, it's all a mess in there. Why? Because the devil will give you fame and fortune and power, but he wants your soul. God says he gives you the power to get wealth and make wealth. Where does it come? It comes into your spirit. It, overloads into, it overflows into your soul. You begin to meditate on it and you start seeing the picture and suddenly now you, you execute it and you and you make you flesh it out. And the next thing you know, you're, we're in the money. That's right. But stay in a secret place so you understand what to do with the money. Hmm. You know, Pastora, one time I was, I was sitting at home. Ooh, this is my, this is when I was still in my spiritual pampers. And I'm watching CNN or something. And all of a sudden, oh, a multi-million dollar, the biggest lottery. Woo -hoo! Everybody's excited about it. <clears throat> and I said, Lord, I know you know the numbers. You know everything, Lord. Hmm? How come you haven't given? How come you haven't given the numbers to somebody in your family? How come you haven't given a believer the numbers? Hmm? Now, the first thing that comes up to you is, oh, God hates gambling. But then what are you going to do with the scripture that says he takes the wealth of the wicked? And he puts it in the hands of the righteous. I said to the Lord, Lord, I know you know the numbers. How come you haven't given it to any believer? Here am I, Lord. <laughs> come on. Here am I, Lord. Like Isaiah said, use me, send me, give, give me the numbers. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit began to download into my, into my thought life. And he said, I know the numbers. I said, well, why haven't you given to them? He says, when I can find somebody that can do with it what I tell them to do without questioning, I'll give them the numbers. He said, but here's the problem. He says, for example, you. If I gave you the numbers and you won the lottery and I told you Give all the money to the poor. Are you ready to endure what's going to hit the fan when your father-in-law finds out that you didn't buy his daughter a beautiful mansion and provide her the best care? That you didn't provide a scholarship for your grandchild? That you didn't take care of this and that and take care of that? Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, then you're going to get the flack from the from the religious bunch. Oh, that's not of God. That's that that's a devil. Uh, Gambling is a sin. We understand addictions. We're not talking about that. We're talking about a one-time deal where God says, "I'm giving you this." But can you do what I tell you to do with it? And Angie, if he if you want it tomorrow, and he told you to give it all to five different ministries, are you ready to go ahead and let it all go? Ah, I think we got some issues here. He said, the problem is not the money or the lottery that, or the numbers. The problem is the heart. That's why you find in the Bible that repeatedly it says, my son or my daughter, my son, give me your heart. Give me your heart. And you know, if you're going to give God your heart, you're not going to do it with, Lord, I give you my heart in Jesus' name. What's the numbers? <laughs> no, if you're going to give God your heart, Rose, you're going to go through some crying, <clears throat> dying, and sighing. You're going to have to die to everything that's in you that is greedy until you become a breed without greed. Woo! Did you hear what I said? You're going to have to come to a place of dying to self to the point that even when you get the money, you don't want even people to know. You're just going to disperse it and get rid of it because that's what God said to do. And you just do it. Give me your heart. You want that ministry to grow? You want that, that, that ch change in your family? You want those breakthroughs? Give me your heart, says the Lord. Come into the place of transformation and change. 
That's why worship, intimacy with God and worship are powerful mediums of change in your life that can accelerate you quickly into the things of God. I hope you're listening to me. One of my brethren, one of our, one of my prophet friends brought his keyboard player and he wrote a song. Take me to your mountain of change to be transformed by seeing your glory. Take me to your mountain of change to radiate by touching what's holy. Eternal realms of glory beckoning me to come to change and then to change again, becoming more and more like you. Transfiguration, change from glory to glory into holy beauty is my destiny in him. But it comes in the secret place, the mountain of change to be transformed. It's a process. Elijah was called to be a prophet, but he didn't come out until he had gone through the mountain of change process. And then when he came out, he wasn't all swag and I'm the prophet and if I say it rains, no. He had died to himself in that place. I am just a mouthpiece of God. That's all I am. God gave you the imagination for transformation and change in your life. You've got to choose what to dwell on and make it a stronghold in your life. If not, the devil will give you. He's got a supply of strongholds for you. He's got a supply of thoughts, but you must carry the shield of faith and get all those fiery thoughts of the devil. Get with the helmet of salvation, getting the thoughts of God, the mind of Christ, the sword of the spirit, two edged, the rhema and the logos. I said to you at the beginning, the word of God, the written word is the general will of God. But in the secret place, you begin to get the specific will of God. The sword of the spirit is double-edged. The general will of God and the other side, the rhema, R-H-E-M-A, word of God. The now word for right now. You know, when you're between the wall and a hard place as I close, when you're between the wall and a hard place, inspiration is good. But you know what, Diana? Diana? Inspiration is good, but when you're between the wall and a hard place, you don't need inspiration. You know what you need? Information. Write it down. These are classics. <laughs> I said to you, when you're between the wall and a hard place, you don't need inspiration. You need information. And that's why we have the story of David at Ziglag, that when they stole everything, his men talked about killing him but he went and he got information lord what's the deal here and the lord said pursue overtake and recover all and i'm telling you this is the year that if you will get into your secret place you will be able to pursue overtake and recover all father tonight we bless you and thank you for your word the entrance of your word brings illumination we know, Lord, that nothing that, that we do is worth anything. It's all because of what Christ has provided for us. Even this message tonight, we thank you for the word of the Lord that has come to us to help us to understand the power that we possess in the imagination. And when we connect it from our heart to our mouth and declare it, it will come to pass because your word tells us that whatever comes out of the heart out of the mouth, originates in the heart. And if we will declare what we see, it will be. We bless you tonight and thank you for helping us so that we can declare and we can see what the Father is saying about us and our situations 
and believe them and receive them as we wait through faith and patience for the promise to manifest. Thank you, Father. We bless every household represented here and those that will be watching us in the future. And to you, we say, be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.